What's up guys, back with another educational video. And this week, I'm not gonna discuss a specific study, but I wanna talk about a more general topic. And that is the confusion between fat burning and fat loss. Now, a lot of people hear fat burning get thrown around a lot. This supplement increases fat burning X. This kind of diet increases fat burning by this much. This inhibits fat burning. And so people get really hung up on this, thinking that fat burning is the same thing as the loss of body fat. Fat burning is involved in the loss of body fat, but it is not the loss of body fat overall. The loss or gain of body fat is the balance between the amount of fat you store versus the amount of fat you burn, also called fat oxidation. And so if you are in a positive fat balance, meaning you are storing fat at a greater rate than you're burning fat, you will gain body fat. If both rates are equal, you're going to maintain. And if you are burning more fat than you are storing, you will lose body fat. Now, a lot of people get confused. They think, oh, well, these are on and off switches. The body metabolism doesn't really work like that. Very few things are just completely off or then turned on. Typically, you've got all the things are running at the same time, but the relative rates of each can decrease or increase based on the hormonal and substrate milieu in the bloodstream cells. So when it comes to diet, a lot of people in the low carb or intermittent fasting camps will say things like, well, low carb or intermittent fasting, it increases fat oxidation so much or fat burning so much. So let's take low carb, for example. Yes, on low carb, you burn more fat because you're eating less carbohydrate, you're secreting less insulin. Insulin can inhibit lipolysis, which is part of the fat burning process. It can inhibit fat oxidation because when you eat carbohydrate, your body can only store so much in glycogen and it has to dispose of the rest through oxidation, okay? And if you're oxidizing more carbohydrate, you're oxidizing less fat. So yes, on a higher carb diet, you burn less fat. But an important thing to keep in mind is, again, this is a balance between the amount of fat you store versus the amount of fat you burn. On a high-carb diet that's low in fat, you are burning less fat, but you are also storing way less fat because carbohydrate doesn't really get stored as body fat. In fact, in metabolic tracer studies where they trace the carbons that wind up in adipose tissue or fat cells, less than 2% originate as carbohydrate. Over 98% originate as fat. So if you're eating more fat and less carbs and your insulin is lower, yes, you burn more fat, but you're also storing more fat. And what is going to decide how much body fat you gain or lose or maintain is going to be what is your energy balance? Are you eating more calories than you're burning or vice versa? People seem to get this a little bit twisted, but if we look at the meta-analyses of studies where they equate protein and calories between high and low carb diets, they see no difference in fat loss. Actually, there is a slight favoritism towards low fat diets, probably because there's some inefficiencies with the conversion of dietary carbohydrate to adipose, like we talked about. Uh, very little of it actually gets stored, but it's not really a big difference. It's a very small difference. I think in the meta-analysis from Kevin Hall, it was like 16 grams more fat loss per day on low fat diets versus low carb diets. That's not really a practical difference. So if you like low carb, if you find that's a sustainable lifestyle for you, perfectly fine to do. I wouldn't do low fat if it's harder for you to stick to just because you get an extra 16 grams of fat loss per day. I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about that. Now, when it comes to intermittent fasting, people will say things like, well, when you're fasting, you're burning so much fat. That's true. When you fast, your fat oxidation will go up. But Again, if we're going to equate, like let's take equating calories on a weekly basis between diets, because if we're going to compare apples to apples, we have to equate calories. Because if a diet is having a unique effect on fat loss, we should see it if calories are equated. And even when we take more extreme versions of intermittent fasting, like alternate day fasting, there was a study done where they looked at alternate day fasting versus eating the same amount of calories every single day. And one group was eating 75% of their maintenance every single day. Okay, so they're in a 25% deficit. The other group was eating 150% of their maintenance calories one day and then complete fasting the next day and then alternated that throughout the study. On the days where those people are fasting, yes, their rates of fat oxidation are undoubtedly going to be higher than people who are eating 75% of their maintenance calories every single day. But on the days where they're eating 150%, now their rates of fat oxidation are going to be much, much lower and their rates of fat storage are going to be higher. And this is going to balance out over the course of the week. And that's why in these studies, we just don't see differences in fat loss. Now, again, I am not saying that intermittent fasting or low carb or ketogenic diets are not useful tools. 
They are, for many people, intermittent fasting, for many people, helps them control their overall calorie intake. Low carb, for many people, feels much more sustainable for a lifestyle than trying to eat low fat. Ketogenic diets, while a little bit more on the extreme, some people like them, they find them easier to stick to, they find they have better satiety. All of those are good reasons to do those diets if they create a sustainable lifestyle for you. But if they don't feel easy, if they're not sustainable, don't force yourself to do some of these diets because you feel like there's some sort of magical advantage because there just isn't. They're, they are just tools to create a calorie deficit. I know we talk about this all the time on the channel. It probably feels boring. It probably feels like I'm beating you over the head, but the reality is that's the truth. If you guys are interested in different diet types, again, I'm not against low carb, low fat, plant-based. Those are all options on our app, Carbon Diet Coach. In fact, we have two low carb options with Carbon Diet Coach, and you can do time-restricted eating with Carbon Diet Coach. We don't pigeonhole you into a certain number of meals per day. So really what we're trying to do is get you on a type of eating that is most sustainable for you because at the end of the day, that is going to be what produces the best results. So if you're interested in that, it's only $9.99 a month. Click the link in the description, check it out. I think you guys will love it. Not only does it allow you to track your macros and give you different diet options, it gives you custom macronutrient recommendations and then adjust them based on how you progress and your individual goals and metabolism. So if you're interested, link is in the description and I'll catch you guys next week.